Hello and welcome to episode 123 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is December 20th, 2021. And as promised, I'm wearing my tubularity today together with the pullover um, whose leftover yarn I used to knit part of the tubularity. But because it's a short sleeve pullover and it's just a bit too cold, uh, with just that pullover, I picked out this old jacket and I'm wearing that on top because I think the colors work together nicely. And uh, so I have three things to show to you today. This cardigan was the first um, knitted garment that I made for Wollerödel when I was working there um, to go into the shop window as a shop window display. And um, so it's quite old. Um, must be probably 14 years old now, but uh, I still like to wear it, even though it does look a bit old. It doesn't look too bad on screen, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm wearing that on top just to keep warm, but now I'll show you the pullover. It's a pattern by Romy Hill out of her uh, new lace knitting book, and it has this beautiful lace pattern in the yoke, and if you knit it in one color, the pattern comes out a lot more nicely but I chose to use those three hand dyed yarns to knit the pullover. I'm still happy with it. It's quite short but it meant I had a lot of yarn left over which I used to knit the cowl. So as you can see this is this color and this color is this color. This bit looks a lot darker than the pullover so I'm not sure whether that's because I washed it and it the color bled or whether it's just because I've washed that too or whether just this part of the hand dyed skein was darker than this part, I don't know. And then the edge, I used the yarn that I used down here. So again, you can see with the different uh, number of stitches and the different pattern, it looks quite different, but it is the same yarn. And I'm already showing one way of wearing this um, cowl, and that's by buttoning it um, around the neck and now I'll show you the buttons that I sewed on and it's the it's actually the buttons that I showed you last week I think um, because I still haven't found the other ones that my sister gave me but these are three ceramic buttons that my sister made so that's a very light one with the flower these this is a light one with the hats and a dark one with a star in the middle and they are fairly heavy but they, they are not pulling on the yarn too much, I think. They do wobble around a bit, <laughs> but I don't mind. So it's quite fun to have them on there because um, one way of wearing the shawl, of course, is just hang it around your neck. That's the easiest. Um, I think the second easiest is to just um, put your head through the whole thing like this. Oopsie daisy. And then, um, of course, you can play around with how um, you, you do things. You can show this color or that color because it's so big. You can always um, like push it around a little bit. If I wear it like this, I do like to show off the buttons. So it's quite nice to have them showing like this. Another thing you can do is if, you, if you're not too keen on having this cover your chest, you can pull this round and you can use one of the buttons and that will keep the whole thing in place like this and um, yeah it's it's really nice and warm if you go outside or if you wear a jacket on top but you can also pull it down a little bit it gives you a bit more air um, and you can wear it like this and uh, yeah so and you can wear it over your head I won't show that so I won't destroy my hair <laughs> but there's one other way that you can wear this cowl and that's something I hadn't thought of but uh, Martina Beam always um, or very often she does videos to show how to wear her designs and that's because quite a few of her designs can be worn several ways and then she shows it in a video which I think is, is very good so what you can do is you can take this end and push it into the other end and then you can use the buttonhole and you can button it close 
I'll use the third button to have it really tight and uh, I think that shows off best what that does. Um, okay, I think my buttonhole is maybe a little bit too big so the buttons flop out easily. Um, so maybe I have to sew that shut a bit more so that the button stays in the um, buttonhole a bit more easy. Um, yeah, but what happens if you push that in there and you button it up like this, you get a cowl that looks like this. So that's a sort of completely different kind of loop. And then again, you can just pull it around your neck and um, it'll sit completely differently because it's it's more <laughs> like this and not like that, if you know what I mean. It's not quite as much fabric in one spot. And, um, and I really like this. And again, you can pull it around a little bit. You can choose where you want to have more of the fabric. You can choose which color you want to show. For me, this is quite nice because, um, oh no, that's not the color in the pullover, but I think it goes really nicely. This is the color in the pullover. So if I wear it like this, I have the same color um, touch my pullover. I think I'm going to leave it this way um, because I really like that. Yeah, I do like that color too. Um, so where you push the loop inside itself, it's it's a lot thicker and warmer. Um, so yeah, I just I just love playing around with it. I was wearing it the other day at home and because I do get these hot flashes, I had to take it off and then put it on again a few minutes later. And I tried to wear it a different style every time I put it on. Um, so I got to play around with it a lot. Um, quite enjoyed that. Yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Quite a lot of knitted things, but that's how I like it. And it does keep me warm in my rather cold shop. Then on to finished objects. And I have... Technically, I have three finished objects, but it does look like a lot more. And I'll start with the oldest and biggest. And that's um, my optic blanket. I finished my optic blanket. So instead of just knitting a few of the seams, I, yeah, once I started sewing, I just couldn't stop. And I decided I'll just finish the whole blanket. So I've seamed up all the pieces. And um, it's way too big to show on screen, but I'll just fold it open to show you that the whole thing is done. So um, this is the width of the blanket. And then this is the length of the blanket. So these were the two pieces that I had sewn together last week. And then those two, I was in the process of sewing together. And then these were the last two nine square squares that I was working on. And now the whole thing is done. <laughs> I haven't taken pictures yet, but I will try and do that as soon as possible. I'll, sh I'll try and show off the blanket uh, on Ravelry. So if you want to see the whole thing, I'll try and show it there. And as it's finished now, it means I can put it in the washing machine and it should be dry when we um, travel over Christmas and I can take it with me. It can be the blanket in the car just in case we get stuck somewhere or just in case I get cold, whatever. I'll be nice and warm with this blanket. Yeah, so that's the optic blanket. That's the big year long knit along that we were doing. It's finished and done. Um, if you are still knitting on a blanket, please share pictures on Ravelry in the group there. Um, I won't shut down the um, discussion thread, so you can always add pictures. I think it's always fun to see what people are doing um, and how different the blankets can look depending on what yarn and what color you choose. So please keep doing that. Okay, then on to the smaller finished objects. Um, the rest is all socks. So I finished her socks. And I need more of those sock blockers so I can put all the socks on blockers. So these are her socks. And again, as with his socks, I managed to line up the little stripes, but the background color is 
just the opposite of the sock. I'm really happy. And as that is supposed to, I'm showing both pairs of socks as one project on Ravelry. So I thought um, I'll just show you both pairs one more time. And then tomorrow I'm going to send them off so that the recipients get them uh, in time for Christmas. So here also I lined up the little stripes. That was more or less um, by chance on these socks, but that's why I chose to do that on, on these socks. So now I have two pairs of socks that I can give away for Christmas. And then, oh, by the way, that was um, Opal Yarn Memories, I think. Beautiful colors. And then I also finished the Zachary uh, Mix Remix socks by Yuka. Um, that was a test knit that I was able to do. And I, I was supposed to finish them by last week, and so I did. And as you can see, it's not very obvious on my socks because I used colorful yarn, but they have a cable running um, up one side of the socks. So it's on that side on one sock, on the other side on the other sock. The other side is just plain ribbing. And if you buy the pattern, which was uh, published today, um, just before I started filming, I received the email that the pattern has gone live. So um, it's linked on my project page. You can go and get it and you can knit either this version with the cable on this um, running on the side of the whole sock or you can, the easiest pair would be just to knit the ribbing or you can knit a cable on the left and on the right side of the leg, no cables on the foot or you can do a version where there's cables all around the leg. And I think that's the version that I'm going to knit next because they look really beautiful and they knit up so quickly and it is such a nice pattern, well-written pattern. They are knit toe up with um, this kind of a heel, um, heel flap and gusset is, is what it's called, called I think. Um, yeah, beautiful pattern. It's out there. You can go and buy it. Uh, I think there's a discount even if you buy it before Christmas, I think. Um, yeah, so go and knit those socks. They're really warm because it's a thick yarn. Uh, I used Opal 8 ply. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with, with the fit and uh, the way they knit up. That's all my finished objects for today. And I must say, I, uh, um, I finished three objects, uh, projects. And I only started one. Quite happy with myself for that. <laughs> okay, so works in progress. I tried to finish but didn't manage the um, spiral socks for my grandmother-in-law. So these are knit out of the alpaca socks yarn by Hansa Farm held double. Um, so I'm using two balls of yarn and I've started the second one but I didn't get further than that, so I still have quite a bit to do. But um, there's still a few days until Christmas and there's a long car drive um, for us to get um, to my husband's family. So um, I'm pretty sure I can finish them um, until I meet my grandmother-in-law. The yarn is extremely soft. It's a very nice uh, sock yarn. Can't wait to knit a pair of socks for myself out of this new yarn. Um, but first, I have to finish these. And that's the only sock in progress that I'm showing you because the only other sock that I have on the needles are the Dubai socks by Knitting Expat out of her Around the World in Eight Socks ebook. And I haven't knit on that. But now that I'm that Christmas is coming closer and I'm almost finished with all the Christmas knitting, I'm finished with the test knit. I can go back and uh, continue knitting on those. So I think after Christmas, that are going to be the socks that I um, try and finish as quickly as possible. And then there's several other patterns out of that ebook that I haven't knit yet. And um, there are two patterns that I definitely would like to knit for myself. So maybe I can do one of those patterns out of the alpaca sock yarn. That'd be a good idea. Okay. Um, then on to other things that are not socks. I did an, 
I did knit a little bit on the mystery known by Sarah Shearer. I'm going to show things now in case you don't want to see but I'm really late so if you are knitting the gnome I guess you've knit more than I have <laughs> so you probably don't have to look away. So the first version that I'm knitting in this uh, thin yarn I had already finished these bits and I had started the hat and this is what it looks like now. Really happy with it um, so I didn't feel like embroidery so I sewed this on um, I know there's um, the, all the instructions for the body are already there, so I really have to uh, do a lot of knitting to keep up. But yeah, it's it's fun to knit it and I enjoy it, but I didn't want to put myself into too much stress and the Christmas presents and the test knit, which is more important. Um, the second version, these are the pieces that you already know. And then I finished the hat, but I haven't added the special something here. And just to show you what the size difference is, this is the difference in size. I, I also enjoy this one a lot. It's the Westfalen Wolle, German yarn, um, produced in Germany. It's a very rustic yarn, but I think it goes really well with these gnomes. So this is going to be a nice and nice rustic gnome. And um, haven't found the right button yet to use, but I'm still looking for something to put on there. Okay, not showing anything anymore. Uh, not showing any gnomes anymore, just in case you in case you were looking away. So that's that. Then um, the other small project that I'm knitting on the book pointed needles are the wrist warmers that I'm knitting out of the new alpaca brushed yarn by Hansa Farm help double with their alpaca silk yarn. And I finished the first wrist warmer. And um, as the pattern says, there's this, um, uh, what do you call that? Ruffle, maybe? This is knit in the pattern, this is only knit out of the mohair yarn. So I only use the alpaca brush, the brushed alpaca for this little bit. So um, there's no more alpaca silk in there. And I really like the way it looks. But as I had already thought I would do, I omitted the thumb hole because if I had done the thumb hole, the ruffle would be like inside my hand. And uh, I don't think, I think I wouldn't have liked that so much. So the way I intend to wear these is um, just like this. So my wrist is really warm and then the ruffle it sort of can peek out of my uh, jacket or something, but I can still use my hand and do work uh, without that being in the way. So I can pull it down a little more if I feel like it, if I need my hand more, but I can pull it up like this and it's still nice and warm. And um, yeah, quite happy with um, how that looks and how that feels. Started the second one, haven't done a lot yet. So it's just the ribbing. Um, I haven't even started on the pattern yet, so it's that bit with the ribbing and I think now I have to start the lace pattern and then, yeah, at some point I will have two wrist warmers. Um, yeah, and that's all the little projects I'm working on. Um, the next two projects are the two black projects <laughs> and one of them being my son's Wizard's hat, um, I added onto the brim of the hat um, until I ran out of yarn. So I um, finished the third ball of yarn. Um, the fourth still has, there's still a bit of yarn there somewhere. I think I pushed it inside the head. Oh, I can't find it. Ah, there we go. So that's what's left over of the fourth ball of yarn. For some reason, they never end at the same at the same time. I'll just quickly show you what it looks like. I must say, I really like it. So just in case my son doesn't like it, I will probably keep it myself. So you can see if I unroll the knitting, the brims already quite some quite a size. Uh, 
fairly big. I, it's not big enough yet for my son, um, so I will add a little bit more and then I will probably start talking to him how far he, how big he wants it because the bigger I knit it, the harder it will be to keep it up. So now with the knitting needle in it, I think it's quite funny that it um, sort of makes these movements. It doesn't stand straight, but I think for a wizard's hat or a witch's hat, um, it's it's even nicer with the sort of uneven um, edge. And I think it's quite funny. <laughs> okay, so that's the hat. And, um, and the other black project I'm knitting, oh, the yarn's everywhere. <laughs> is the cardi, the rainbow cardi I'm knitting and I'm planning to use the neon color vol d'acryl yarn that I got in the advent calendar last year for the edge, for the for the front edge of the cardigan but before I can add that I have to knit the main body of the cardigan and you can probably not tell a big difference to last time I showed it to you I added several more rows um, and I still have to add a few more until the yoke is done. Um, it's fairly simple but rather boring knitting at the moment. And I try and knit on it mostly during daytime so that um, the light is good. Um, yeah, just wanted to show you. I'm still working on it. I haven't forgotten about it. <laughs> and uh, the main motivation really is to get, to get it done so I can start using the neon colors. Okay, then we are getting to some bigger projects. Um, and the first, of, uh, the first I want to show you is my skirt, the snowflake skirt. That's going to go with the um, snowflake pullover that I knit some time ago. So the main color is one of these Abo colors, subscription colors that several people swap with me so that I had um, I think four or five of them and I knit the pullover I still had enough left over to do the skirt and then um, I chose to use this pattern that I had chosen for the pullover but that was too big to go into the pullover and uh, and I finished it I finished the pattern so this is what it looks like this is all of the color work that's going into the skirt and if you look closely you can see I've already started um, knitting the ribbing um, only just started I think I'm on round two of the ribbing yeah and the plan is I will probably do the ribbing the same length as on the pullover um, but I'll decide that once I get there but I finished the color work I'm really really happy that's done added a few rounds of stockinette before I started the ribbing and now I'll do a few rounds of ribbing and then the skirt will be done and if I get enough time uh, in the next couple of days I can finish the ribbing I can wash the skirt I won't actually block it aggressively or anything I will just wash it and lay it flat and make sure that the um, the color work will be a lot nicer once it's washed and it has relaxed um, just in case someone's interested this is what the inside looks like you can kind of see the pattern you can see a bit of the star in the floats yeah so this is um really exciting um maybe this is going to be enough for the ribbing maybe not i do have another ball of yarn uh, in that color so i have enough yarn to do the ribbing as long as i want want to and i should still have enough yarn to do a pair of socks and the idea is to do a pair of socks with uh, some color work in the cuff white color work certainly and some some sort of uh, snowflakes very looking forward to doing that and to choosing that so that's the skirt and then I picked up a project that I haven't shown in a really long time and the project is called all projects memory blanket and the plan originally was that every time I finish a project out of sock yarn I will add a square on this blanket and I did that for a while and I, then I completely, I didn't forget about it, but I just never got around to adding any more squares. And, uh, and then, yeah, basically <laughs> I uh, just let it lie and did not work on it anymore. So interestingly enough, on this side, 
these are the three squares that I added after I finished the pullover. So it's those three colours and it's the same order that I put them in in the pullover. And then the last two squares that I knit before I put it away were those two. Um, and that was, I think, I think, yeah, I remember. These were the colours that I used for the um, sock couple last year. So um, the, the pair of socks that I knit. So this is the two pairs of socks that they're getting this year and last year they got these colours. So it's a year ago that I um, added, it's probably not a year ago that I added the, the squares, but it's a year ago that I finished the project <laughs> for, uh, with this yarn. So now, last week, I added those two squares and they are both from socks. That was around uh, one of the sock madness, so that was in... March, I think, and this is a pair of socks. Um, I think that was a test knit that I did. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, so I'm not really knitting in the order that I finished the projects because it's such a long time ago. I can't remember and I don't want to um, check on Ravelry. I'll just use any yarn that's lying around. I will try and add them into the blanket as quickly as I can and maybe at some point I'll decide, okay, now I'm I'll ignore the other colors that I haven't put in and I, I will start adding yarn of projects that I've just finished. So one thing, um, oh yeah, <laughs> I meant to put those colors in again because I'm knitting another, I've knitted another project out of the yarn, but I think with this color, I used up everything I had. And also with the minis before, I just used up everything I had. So I think the only two colors that I can add into the blanket again are those two. The light and the dark one. I think I have enough of those to do two squares. So they will represent the whole cowl, which is okay. Um, yeah, but I'm quite happy that I picked it up again and can't wait to continue working on that. And that brings us to the knit-alongs. And again, it's a plural because last week I told you I wanted to start the Volkig, the um, cowl by Martina Behm that I want to knit out of this uh, Angora yarn by Seidenhase. And I did start. It's not a lot, but it's um, it's a start. And it's a the Volkig is a free pattern on Ravelry and Nitty.com. And it's just one row of... Uh, instructions that you repeat over and over again so it's really simple to knit and you can um, yeah knit it by heart really quickly I think you don't really have to count a lot because you have those stitch markers and all you have to do is count to six with the purl stitches then knit three together and you have to do two uh, knit front backs before the marker and by the way that was quite interesting when I started knitting it uh, I made a mistake and um, and I have a lot of people come to my shop and ask about patterns because they don't understand what they're supposed to do and I always tell people to read very carefully what uh, is written in the pattern and I didn't do that and I just wanted to let you know um, so I think that's you, you read something and you think you know what it says and then you don't read carefully enough. So um, what the pattern says is to purl six and then purl three together. And for some reason, my mind interpreted um, purl two together three times. I don't know, but that's what I did. Then I did the knit stitches and then it says KFB twice. And I was like, I knit two together three times. So the KFB should be three times so that I have the same number of stitches again. So I did think about that and and I was I was about to do three KFBs just to get the right number of stitches but then I decided to read the pattern again and then I realized it said purl three together and because of the way it's it's written in German I don't know my mind got it mixed up but then I realized if you purl three together you've only decreased two stitches so you only have to do the KFB twice and the pattern was correct and it was me who'd interpreted it wrongly so I went back fixed it and uh, and now I can knit the thing 
um, yeah, it's very lightweight, it's very um, thin in a way. I hope it will fluff up a bit after I washed it. Um, I might put it in a dryer. I read that if you put this yarn into the dryer, it will fluff up quite a bit. And I would like to have it as fluffy as possible. <laughs> so we'll see how that works. And then, um, so this is this was supposed to be a little in between it along because I meant I've, I had planted this for a really long time and I was glad to have a reason to actually start it. But the other knit along that I had been planning for a long time is the Rio Kalina Cowl by Kat Bordy. Um, it's a free pattern and it's a, a cable pattern cowl. And I had wanted to do a tutorial video to show how to work the cables and then do this as a knit along. And um, it just took me forever to actually sit down and uh, do the film the video. And that's what I did last night. So yesterday I filmed the video. It's not, uh, we haven't completed working on the video. And this is going to be the first tutorial video that I will translate into English. So this will probably the first um, tutorial video that I do on this English channel. And I am thinking of translating some of the other tutorial videos that I have made and that are on the German channel. Um, We'll see about that. I'll let you know once I get there. But this is the beginning of my Rio Kalina cowl. And the fun thing about this is you cast on 64 stitches, you, you do knit two, pull two for a few rows, and then you can start cabling. And um, Cat Body tells you how to do the cables. I'll show that on the video. But she doesn't tell you when and where to do the cables. So you are free to choose um, and Put in a cable whenever you feel like it and don't put a cable if you don't feel like it so that's quite fun and this is one side and this is the other side and because of the way she does the cables the two sides look differently and that's what she wanted so when you wear the cowl the way it's sewn together the way you wear it both sides show and that's what what makes it more interesting in the video in the tutorial i'll tell you how you can do the cable so both sides look the same, if that's what you prefer. My sister already said that's what she's going to do. So I will tell you how to do that. But um, yeah, I'll also show how to do the cables so that they are different on the front and on the back. I'm using Pure Baby Alpaca by Hansa Farm. It's their alpaca yarn that you can wash in the washing machine. And can't wait to finish that and, and wear that. Yeah. That's everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed it. This is going to be the last video that I film this year. I have, oh, but that's only in German. I, I uh, made another video with my sister uh, two weeks ago and I will show that, I will publish that on the German channel between Christmas and New Year's. If you want to see that and listen to it in German, you can do that. Um, over on the German channel. It's linked underneath the video. But on this channel, this is going to be the last video for this year. And um, I'll show you what I've knitted over the holidays um, beginning of January on the first Monday in January. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!